Hello Internet, Mike here, and this is a video blog, or a vlog, as do they still call it a vlog? I don't even know. This is actually a story of a big event that happened for me 15 years ago today when I was just a wee teenage lad of 16. Uh, it was the night that I met and interviewed my childhood idol, Weird Al. I'm not even making this up, this is true, look. It, See this photo? And there's another one. And another. And another. See, it's just proof. I didn't just Photoshop my 16-year-old self into photos of Weird Al. Um, it just, it's true. I got to do it. And here is uh, just a little bit of a background to um, how it happened. I went to a fairly large high school. I graduated with about 700 people. It was big. It's one of the biggest high schools um, in New Jersey. It also offered a lot of different kind of activities. I was part of the drama club, I was part of the newspaper club, I had played in a band, and I also was part of the TV class. We produced a monthly show called Monthly Rewind, which was a news magazine highlighting events at the school and uh, the town and just in general, which actually Rewind is now celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. So good job, Rewind. This is what alumni looks like. With our school being so big, we actually had a fairly large auditorium. It was a 2,500 seat auditorium, and it, it didn't even fit the entire population of the school. I mean, that's how big our school was. But because the theater was a professional grade theater, they actually would bring in outside professional touring acts, uh, not just traveling theater, but they would bring in real concerts like Jessica Simpson played there, Barry Manilow, The Bare Naked Ladies, George Carlin, The Moody Blues, Trisha Yearwood, David Copperfield, and I got to work like all those shows. And it was on November 1st, 2000, that Weird Al was going to perform at my high school. And for me, Weird Al was my childhood idol, just like many people from uh, our generation. And it was just like, pff, I have to, take advantage of this because when am I ever going to get a chance to do something like that again? So I pitched this idea of bringing in Weird Al to our TV studio to interview him. And through people I knew at the theater, I actually got in touch with Weird Al's tour manager and believe it or not, they said yes. So I couldn't believe it. I, I did everything I could to prepare for this moment. I redid the lights in the studio, I rearranged how the studio was. It even got to the point, I think, um, where I became a little borderline militant and um, um, definitely crazy. I was a little psychotic uh, from that because I was so nervous. I was so like, you know, everything has to be perfect and I, and I was micromanaging every single little detail. I'm very surprised my friends in the TV classes did not um, uh, not be my friend anymore. Um, somehow they still talked to me after that night, which um, I wouldn't have talked to me after that night. It was a, it was an interesting night to say the least. So when, when it came around, I was pretty much pacing back and forth the whole night, uh, I couldn't relax, I couldn't breathe. And I went down to the dressing room and then I saw him. And he came and he shook my hand and he talked to me. But I didn't really, you know, put together that I still had to um, conduct an interview. I was just talking to Al on the whole way up and I was mumbling a lot. I, I really, I don't think I put together a coherent sentence. Uh, I kind of forgot the English language, it felt. And um, Al was very humble, he was very quiet. Um, he would ask me questions about the school and the town um, that he was going to use to incorporate into the show to kind of give it a more personal and local flavor uh, to the concert. The lights are up. It fades in from black. Hello, I'm Mike LeCision for WTHS Monthly Rewind. Tonight is a very special uh, thing that we got tonight. We have in the studio with us the one of the biggest name recording artists in the comedic world, Weird Al Yankovic. Al, thank you for being with us tonight. <laughs> My pleasure, thank you. And um, we like to note that Running With Scissors, it's still on sale in stores. Not a great start. So the first uh, couple questions went okay. First thing I wanted to ask you is, how do you feel about playing at a facility such as a high school? 
Well, I told my booking agent that I wanted to play nothing but high school auditoriums, but he kind of messed that one up. You oh. know, we're playing a bunch of other places too, but this is really my prime venue. I'm, this is, I'm playing to the people, <laughs> I'm going out there, I'm, I'm doing it. And how does this compare to um, other venues that you've played? Well, other venues, uh, you know, they don't have high school classes at. Uh -huh. So that would be the main difference <laughs> there. And um, now, I've seen your tour last year. I went to see you at the East Center in, back in November. And I must say it was absolutely excellent. Thank and I want, I want to say that, um, ask you, who, like, did you direct the come up with all the different tech, like, lighting things and all the different special effects? And, like, who, who how did you come up with all that? Well, I mean, I have a lighting director and I have, you know, people that work for me, but, and, uh, but you know, the, c conceptually, the, the, the tour uh, is something that I put together. I come up with a set list. I come up mm -hmm. with the, the, the visual gags and, uh, and the, the, um, the clips and things that we play uh, in the course of the, of the mm -hmm. um, show. And then, of course, I, I you know, hire people that can help me achieve all the things I want to happen. My mind kind of uh, started drawing blanks halfway through because I'm trying to listen to Al. And at the same time, I'm trying to remember my questions. Now, at the time, I thought to be professional, you had to remember your questions. I didn't realize that you could, like most interviewers, would keep them on a pad in front of them and would even take notes during an interview and ask follow-up questions. That thought never <laughs> occurred to me. And if you actually look right there on the table, you'll see there's a piece of paper with uh, questions on it. I forgot they were there. And, um, oh my god, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, are you sad that your tour is coming to an end? Well, you know, I'm, I know I'm going to miss it, but uh, it's been a long tour. It's a 16-month tour, mm -hmm. and we're down to the last four dates. So <laughs> we're all kind of like looking forward to staying home for a while. And when, when you're not on tour, what is like a typical day at home like for you? Oh, you know, sleep till four in the afternoon, get yeah. up, have some breakfast, take a nap. That's beautiful. Watch a little TV, and then I've had it for the day. With your songwriting and your parodies, how do you come up, like, where... How does the process go? Like, where do you just listen to songs and you just get the idea? Or? I just listen to the voices in my head, mm. and they force me to write against my will. <laughs> it's nothing I have control over. I wish I could control it, but I can't. With, uh, I know back with uh, the Coolio thing, with Amish Paradise, has he ever forgiven you? Have you heard anything? You know, we don't go bowling anymore, so I don't know really how he feels <laughs> these days. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, this was four years ago, and I know people bring it up all the time still because, I guess, uh, uh, VH1's Behind the Music made a mm -hmm. big deal of it because it was one of the few things in my life that had any real kind of drama or controversy mm -hmm. to it. Um, but, you know, it, it was a while ago, so I would hope that he's, you know, calmed down a little bit. And other than Coolio, has any other artists had any objections or, like, have they not liked what they heard or...? No, not really. I mean, most artists look at it as kind of a, an homage when I do a parody. It's not like, you know, it's done in a mean-spirited kind of way. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, uh, most artists look at it as a kind of a badge of honor when they get their Weird Al <laughs> video or parody. And then it all went downhill. Oh my god, my mind is drawing a blank. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I forgot my questions and I, I started just <laughs> snapping my fingers. And I was trying to get attention of one of my friends off camera to uh, kind of feed me a question and everybody's just, there's all these people looking at this and I'm choking really bad. And Al just kind of takes over. Help me out here, I don't know okay. what <laughs> Uh, you want me to ask you some questions? Sure. Ask me so some where'd questions. you get that shirt? I got it at Kohl's, which is a local dressing it's store. It's very nice. I, it's, uh, you know, where'd you get your shirt? Uh, out of my closet. Really? Because that's where I keep all my shirts. Oh, okay. I was uh, embarrassed, and I, I just wanted to wrap this up. It's like, uh, I can't let this go, get any worse. So I try to start wrapping up. Well, um, I guess, unfortunately, time will be up. Oh, darn. I know. I, I know you're, this sad, sick interview <laughs> is uh, very degrading, but um, I'd like to thank you for being here. Oh, and, thank you for being here. And I hope you have a great show. Thanks so much. So it faded to black, and as soon as I heard that we were clear, I turned to Al. I, I'm sorry, that was so bad. I don't bad. know. <laughs> that was only four minutes. Four minutes is fine. Afterwards, he did uh, a couple promos uh, for the station. Hello, this is Weird Al Yankovic, and this is the high point of my life because I'm going to be on Monthly Rewind Wednesday night on Channel 37 after the Board of Ed meeting. I can't believe it! Hello, this is Weird Al Yankovic, and you're watching Monthly Rewind. Aren't you? Good morning, Washington Township High School. WAKE UP! WAKE UP!
He signed autographs for the crew. He took pictures with the crew. And then we walked him back to his dressing room. He put on the concert and that was it. I spent maybe 15, 20 minutes with Al total. It was the most embarrassing and nerve wracking moment of my life. And for 15 years, it's actually still been on my mind. And I think about it all the time, every time I work with a celebrity of some kind. Since then, I've gotten to work with Michael Ray Bauer, who was Donkey Lives from Salute Your Shorts. He was in No Footing. I was on the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Turkey Day Marathons with Joel Hogson and the Bots for two years. I also directed a music video for MC Lars, which he collaborated with Weird Al too. You know, they, they know each other. Just saying. Uh, Rich Cronin from LFO, Brian Holleran from Clerks, um, and speaking of Clerks, Kevin Smith. I met Kevin Smith multiple times since then. I even technically worked with him because I was an extra in Jersey Girl. There I am. You can see me right there clapping. Never watch that one again the same way, would ya? Mm. Yeah. So that's an interesting little story about me that you may not have ever known. And in the offbeat chance that Al might see this, can I get a do-over, a second chance, a mulligan, a chance to redeem myself? I mean, that really was like one of the most embarrassing moments of my life, you know, completely humiliating myself in front of you. So I would love a chance to be able to do that again and to maybe, um, you know, do a better job a second time around. And, uh, you know, we have a nice little cult following on our YouTube channel. I mean, there's a chance the views might hit triple digits. So anyway, there you go. And uh, for those wondering, uh, we are starting production on Super Plumber Brothers, the new Living Nape series this November, which actually by the time this, that is today, it is November. So we start this month and uh, just keep following us on the Facebooks and the Twitters and we'll let you know updates. Until then, see ya.